Last time, I took a look at Blender's Grease Pencil, which turned out to be an amazing tool. So today, we're going to look at Blender's capabilities as a free 2D animation software. Let's hop into today's video. 2D animation in Blender is actually very straightforward. Similar to what I mentioned about the Grease Pencil, I think the hardest part of using Blender is getting used to the interface. But otherwise, there's not much to be confused about, especially if you've done 2D animation using another software before. So I have Blender open, and as you can see, we have this 2D animation option. So I'm going to just hit that, and it opens Blender's 2D animation workspace. Over here, you have different brushes and pencils. And if we go down here to our object data properties, we notice that automatically there is a layer here for lines and a layer here for fills. Think of these layers sort of like layers in Photoshop. So I'm going to just be using this lines layer to draw all of my lines. And in our material properties, by default, we have these four materials. So the first one is a solid stroke, which is basically a solid stroke. I'm not really crazy about that pencil, so I can go in here, tap this. And uh, let's, I like this F ink pen. So now using my solid stroke material, I can make a solid stroke. and. If you're using a tablet, you can get, you know, the pressure sensitivity to pick up while using these brushes, which is really nice. And our second material here is the squares stroke. It makes squares. I'm going to uh, zoom in a little using my middle mouse scroller. And I'm going to drag us up a bit using this hand. You can also zoom using um, this zoomer and, you know, moving your mouse in and out. And you see that it drew squares. Next, we have our solid fill, which works if I drag out a shape and then close it. It's a solid fill. So it's kind of nice if like I make an outline of something using, let's say, my solid stroke. And, you know, I make a heart. Woohoo. Right? And then I go back and I can kind of trace this outline that I did. Like this. And my last material here is my dots stroke. Makes dots just like this square stroke kind of did. Another thing about using Blender's drawing tools over here is that I'm going to draw another heart. I'm going to purposely not close this gap all the way, right? And I'm going to make a new material here. So I'm going to press this plus. I'm going to hit new. And I'm going to make sure that this is not set to stroke and that it's set to fill. And then I'm going to change the color. Let's do this color, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to try to fill this heart in. But it fills in literally everything. And that is because this shape is not closed. For a shape to be filled in Blender, you must close that gap. So I'm going to go back to my draw tool. I'm going to go back to my solid stroke and I'm going to close it. Now when I click on this material, the paint bucket tool, I can fill this in. Perfect. Now if I tried filling um, this hard in with this solid stroke color, it would not fill the shape, it would fill the stroke. And that is because um, in this material, as you can see, the surface, right, uh, stroke is checked and not fill. If you want to fill it with the pink color, you got to make sure it's checked on fill and not stroke. So that's another important thing to keep in mind. 
you know, Blender does have erasers. So if you make a mistake, right? So if I go back into this uh, tool option here, I'm going to go to my eraser. And there's four different erasers. But you know, what I could do is I could just drag select these three keyframes because this is where our drawings are on. And I'm just going to hit delete. So I'm going to make sure that I'm starting in uh, frame zero for what I'm going to draw. And uh, I'm going to go back to my draw tool and let's just draw something. Okay, so I just drew these two uh, eyes. <laughs> if you want to edit your lines, you can go into edit mode. There's a lot of different tools here. You can also go to sculpt mode. There's this push feature, so I could uh, push my lines in or I could push them out. And you can change the settings for how strong this is or the, you know, the size of this uh, circle radius. Okay, so I'm going to go back into draw mode and this is going to be our first frame, right? So I'm going to go forward in the timeline. I can drag this or I can hit the arrow key, the right arrow key on my keyboard. And I'm going to go to frame two. And up here in these show overlays, I'm going to make sure that my onion skin is checked. I think I'll go up to frame 4 and I'm gonna close these eyes. I'm gonna draw that they're closed. Right. So now, open, closed. And we could go back in, you know, our second keyframe and I could make the eyes, uh, you know, in the process of opening and closing okay so now we have our eyes right so I'm going to go into this paint bucket tool uh, I'm gonna fill in the irises pink because why not awesome so let's say I'm happy with this so when I'm exporting, I'm going to go into this output properties and it is already 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is beautiful. And I'm going to make sure that instead of frame start being one, it's going to be zero. And I want my frame end to be four because that's where my animation ends. So this is all we see. And it's 24 frames per second. You can always go and edit this. And by default, it's set to PNG. So it will currently export this with PNG. And we don't want that. So I'm going to change this to the FFmpeg video. Okay, and in this encoding, make sure we have H.264 as the codec. Uh, Video quality is fine because this is not, you know, that great anyway, but like you can always change the quality. Still in this output, right? This is where um, we are going to decide where we want this to be exported to. So I'm going to click on this folder. I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to name it eyes in this here, except. I'm going to go to render, render animation, and it's going to start rendering. Just be patient. And you can see the frame count up here. So now it says frame four, so it should be done. So if I go to my desktop and I look for eyes, And I can play it. Perfect. Now for my rating. For how accessible it is, 5 out of 5. It's free and available for Windows, Mac OS. You could even download it on Steam. For simplicity, 4 out of 5. Making 2D animations in Blender is pretty straightforward. 
The only thing that really makes it any different from any other 2D animation software is probably the tools that are offered to draw and edit your lines. And for flexibility, 4 out of 5. I think because Blender is known for its 3D, it could be really easy to incorporate 3D assets into your 2D animation if you'd like, which would be great for references or for making something really unique. And of course, you have the option to stay completely 2D if you'd like. If you can't really choose between 2D and 3D animation, I'd say try out Blender because not only is it free, it also has great capabilities for 2D animation, 3D animation, 2.5D animation, whatever you like. I hope this was a useful video in figuring out whether Blender is right for you. And please let me know what else you'd like to see me try out in the comments below. Have a totally awesome day and I'll see you next time.